we had the balls here as guys that were driving because yeah. you know it was. You ain't some African to race on the street, you just yeah. come. In the States, it's how people make their names, you know, this is how they become. Street credit. Street credit. It so, happened four years ago at Midvale. Mm -hmm. I had some guys doing donuts in high yeah. on the grass. Yeah. Can you please stop? Can you please stop? After the fourth one, a cup. Yeah. You're in South Africa. There's just a bump of a car. Oh, the vent, the track. The, it's like a track and move for a car, you understand? Yeah. It's not. It's the devil of the sport. Unfortunately, it's part of it. You yeah. take it, you got to take the good of the bad. Yeah. So, That's so, Oh, massacre. Yeah. Deed. Um. <laughs>
in the States is how people make their names. You know, this is how they become street names. Credit. Street credit. And we had the likes of it. I'd say that one of the craziest races I've ever let off on the street was when Cowboy used to have his first two J wagon. Yes, yeah. And we had the yellow and blue. That's correct. Yeah. And no, no, no. That was so his um, was chainsaw. chainsaw. Yes, yeah, his yeah. first wagon, first two, wagon yes. the two J one. The one where Calvo, that's how I got to know Calvo through that car. And Rian Mayer had an escort yes. on Nitro's 800 yes, horsepower, yeah. whatever it was at the time. It was the craziest race travel I've been down. That road at 400 meters unprepped. Yeah. This car was hooked and went. I still got the video today. <laughs> It's called it yours only because their cars were highly tuned yeah. but a stock in five downpipe and yeah. software just would not cut it on our list. A gatekeeper when we first started was a, was a Z4, Ashley from BMW. BMW with the maroon one, yes. Yeah. I worked with Ashley and I was the There we go, the coming yours with Green Reaper. Yeah. It was running a 10-2, 10-1, that was, that was our gatekeeper. Yeah. So it was known to the level we grew on the street and yeah. it's what's taking me through the avenues today. Decided one day, and I was like, I'll be into the track, be into the track. I was like, no. I'm going to do this on the street. I hosted a massive cash day. Guys from Middleburg came out, Gusto came out, 011 came out. We had 65 cars on the road. It was the biggest shootout in the watch, and it's still being its own Speed and Sound's play. Speed and Sound covered the whole event for us. Okay. Never posted illegal events on there. Yes, yeah. So that we condone it, but. No, yes. but like I said, it was just in an illegal. It wasn't illegal because we got the how you got the track. Yes, there yeah. we go. What made it illegal is that we just didn't book it on the road for the day, but I had the owner's permission to be yeah. there. Had ambulances there. You understand? It yeah. was completely in a remote area, nowhere yeah. near traffic or so illegal but legal. Yes. And they said, Could I come and shoot it? And they did. And I tell you, I saw a 12 page in the magazine, and it was the most brilliant writer I've ever seen. Yeah. It still gives me goosebumps today to watch it because. Knowing that's where we came from, where we are today, it's, it's a brilliant spot. Man. Yeah, a thank you to those guys that made all of this problem, came out on the street, supported me all these years because out there, all, without drivers, there yeah. is nothing. I can only do so much without the drivers. I always give all the credit to the drivers mm -hmm. and respect the credit. Yeah. But it's crazy if you, if you think back now of the people we knew and then have fallen away that stopped racing or that we've lost. You know, along sure. the way, it's actually quite crazy. I'll never forget that one incident in Domingo race um, rolled at 1400. Yeah. But I never run down a track that fast in my life. Besides the Nazi rolled as well, I chased sure. him. But sure. yeah, and again, to the point where you had that pace check, I mean, you didn't have people past the start line. You made it safe for everyone. I mean, Domingo came out fine. On the yeah. And I mean, the wheel was 250 meters it's down the bush. The fuel tank yeah. followed it. 100%. I yeah. mean, the roll, if I, I remember him saying, the accident happened 172 k's an hour. Yeah. That's what happened when he got touched on the side. Yeah. From him being touched on the side to the hospital was 30 minutes. He never got injured. There was no, he had a little bit of pain on his chest, but I was with him there with his family. He's very close. We moved to Australia. Yes, yeah. He's still drag racing that side there, but he was a true, true, true street racer. I mean, yes, yeah. he built that car into another, into a GX. He's back racing yeah. again. Those are the real racers. But when I tell people, those are the real racers. Yes, yeah. Funny enough that GX is back, back home with Wales here with us now. So a good buddy of mine, Neelan, bought the That's car great. and I put an open mode. We actually dined on it yesterday and guess that how it went. It's a and it's going to be interesting. He's going to be joining the UDL with that car. Uh, something that you've started, like you mentioned, in the start of the podcast, to be Gusto and all these options. Sure. Followed you up from, we'll say from the bottom, sure. to where you are now um, with, with racing and stuff. And the touch on the UDL and how, how you plan on running it, what it's about, just so people know. Okay, I'm going to go by, I might miss one or two things on it, it's not all right now in my head, but I'll just go on it. Let's go back to, in the street again, we had a couple of teams that used to run back in the day that had shut down. Obviously, the Owen one has still been going, we're going to Durban, Cape Town, but I wanted to do something again that was more local to us, tighter, more often. Got a hold of Dan for him to be Gusto and said to him, this is my idea. He says, why are you going to ask me? Yeah. Follow you. Let's go, let's try this again. And I said to him, let's try it properly. Let's, let's put in a good effort. Let's give someone or people a reason to follow the sport again. Mm -hmm. Cowboy from the bomb squad, friend of mine too, spoke to him. Would you be keen to do this? And yeah, he was keen. Um, Middleburg side, Chris to that side there. It's still a bit slow for them there, but we're going to help him out. I mean, yeah. there's calls from West, um, 
for the record. Vidbank Vidbank side that fast like you can join other teams that guys are going to go over this again. You don't need to have fun. You don't have to do 300 k's an hour to have fun. Yeah. You can turn your cars down, you can come and join us. You can go do other events when it's time to turn them up. Yeah. Like I'm going to give you the names of the likes of the Michael Ludis. Leon deploys a super fast cars. I know they need a super good track. Yeah. But let's turn them down a little bit. Heads up against the boys and have some fun. Because the guys want to see them. They like them. They love their cars. It's not that it's a chip on the shoulder. I mean, if I line up with the PlayStation cars they call off today sure. against a Michael Ludic that runs low eight seconds and he sleeps on the line or his car balks and I beat him, I'm putting my hazards on and I'm claiming the win. You love the a win is a win. <laughs> <laughs> a win is a win. So no, 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 no. I'm just sure you're in the first part because no one loves hazards. I think he started the hazards in South Africa. But back to that, and it's not because we, like, we know guys like. It's going Quentin Boyle and they're super fast. All these guys are super fast. They're fast in our country. Yeah. You've seen a few guys come and join my events and turn their cars down and come and race up compared. Don't run away. Don't hide. Yeah. Come back. Let's turn the cars down. Let's, you watch Leon with Leon and Bud the race yes. level at 20 meters. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, was also there. Um, he also comes to my events, but my last yeah. when I came back to Bentville now, yes. the last the, the most previous catches I had, it was a Leon deploy with Dupi with the up, not Dupi, but yes. with the red light went off and um, Leon came off and he's like, oh, but he jumped. I was like, no, the chase is a race. Yes, yeah. Oh shit, I didn't know that. They don't like can it, we, but. Can we, can we, sorry, I'm going to cut you there. Yeah. But this is live and uncut. So, <laughs> what is chase is a race? Okay. Just to it. make it clear, some people don't understand that, and you did mention it at driver's briefing what is chasing the race because we almost had a boxing match after one cash day. Yes, okay, so let me just go over this because everyone can understand. I'm not a fan of chasing the race, but we implement it because it's very difficult to get timing equipment out every single time to, to see who's a red light. So, what do you do every single time someone jumps? Oh, he jumped, the race is over. Yeah. The viewers lose that, the watch of that race. Yes. If he jumps, let him jump. Don't chase. If you're a good enough racer, you'll sit. Sit. If I'm sitting there, well, I'm, I'm, there he goes. Okay, he's gone. But now I'm sitting there and I'm nervous. And I'm like, don't. Yeah. Oh, I go, why am I chasing him? Go racing him. Or if you're cocky enough to think you're going to catch him. Sure. And sometimes it backfires, sometimes it does. It does. I, I love chasing the race. I love it for the simple fact that I think it gives the underdog an advantage. Just going to say that. And it, gives, it really tests. A veteran of a drag racer to sit. For some people, I, I give you a silly example. The key to cuts a very good reaction time yes. on a bike, for example. It's so hard for him to sit because his reaction is sure, so good. Sure. So, what does that do? Does he sit? We've had debates, and the funny part is myself, Corpus, and he, obviously, me being the slowest of the three, we would sit and be like, okay, now jump in this run. So, the next one, they think you're going to jump in, and he sits, but you green light. Yes. So, people don't understand that racing actually becomes a, how can I say, it's not just about the racing, it becomes a whole real. thing like a debate and a brainstorm of, okay, how you technical, use your mind. technical, how, how do we win this race? How do we make each other advantage? It's, I'm sure you know of an infamous Makulu boss. Yes, yeah. It's one of the best heads up street races, track races in East Africa. If I tell you he's jumped more races <laughs> than anybody else. We spoke about that before this but podcast with Etienne it's, well. it's his art. Yeah. He's jumping. Yeah. So, and he's telling you, I'm going to jump, jump. don't chase me. <laughs> Chasing, you think I'm gonna catch my food boss, you ain't catching my food boss. No, it's no. gone. So, uh, this is why I say I love the chase of race. But let's say now you got a guy of the likes of Trey, Papa Smith, Killer Smith, yeah. and you got now me with the trailer. There's a very big gap here between two. If I jump in a car and he chases me, all yeah. of a sudden, this race is a bit tight. It's, yeah. it's on, yeah. you understand? Instead of oh, stopping, mm. coming back, or should there is a chance on the slower guy if I just jump in and he sleeps and he can't get the gear, yeah. I'm gone, I win the race. Now. Thank you, yeah. we're not there chasing the timing board, we're yes, there yeah. chasing the finish line. Yes. That's what people need to understand. So my, I, I would love to ask you, please don't ever take that rule away. Chase is a race for as long as I race. It's a cash <laughs> race. So everybody will only find Chase is a race at a cash, cash race. race. Yes, I yeah. don't bring it into my other events because it's been there since the street. And another reason I use it is, it's, like I said, it's very difficult to see you keep jumping. Yeah. I've got to keep having a marshal or a quarter race. Now, yes, yeah. 
like happened earlier, he didn't press the recorder, the memory card is full. Yeah. Now the race, now I've got a fight with people on the start line. I'll go back a couple couple years ago, 2017, I think it was, I had an event in Mithal, one of my first cash days. Yanni could see, uh, Johan could see, Austin Healy, racing against Morris from Fulbus. They were in the line. We watched the car move. We never triggered the red light yeah. of the time equipment. And we said, red light is only, the jump only counts if the red light comes on. Okay. He moved the whole tire roll before the red light came on. Yeah. Clear jump. But because the rule was red light, it made such a big loss with the start yeah. line. Chase is a race. Yeah. Yeah. you know what would have happened now? He would have jumped. It would have been a jump. Morris yeah. would have stood still. The race would have been over. Exactly, yeah. Simple as that. So I'm just trying to simplify it. And it sort of just added a different element I mean, yeah. to the I get you. I hear you get each other all the time. The chase is a race. He's shit. I hear it. But I, I think it's actually quite cool. Is it's it for a big event? Is it for like a national? Or no, no, no. It's not. I'm yeah. not. It's, it's a for a cash day. Yeah, it's a street vibe. Yeah. Yeah. We, we watched Makulu Boss do a cash day. He was winning. The car yeah. died on the start. And what did he do? He turned. Left, yeah. He turned left at the turn of the mark. This guy got his car started. And went. Went all of a sudden. He's like, whoa. Sh and he ended up winning. Yeah. So Chase is race. That's where it comes from. Guys, just so you all know, Etim um, made a blooper here on this one. This is on two of the statements. You forgot to press record, but we'll get in for that yeah, one. We'll I'm gonna put a snippet of you talking somewhere we're, this year. I think we're twenty eight minutes in and he's like. Now, just so the yeah. guys will not everyone's familiar with what's the red light and stuff. I think Etim maybe can just put a snippet of of a stage light. You know, sure. again, you said between this podcast to educate. What is the educate? It sounds like. To uneducated people. No, so, yeah, to, yeah. to to um, how can I say? Give people knowledge as knowledge. to what we do. What's our? This is our life. This is our. We love it. We love it. We watch. Life. It's what we do on a daily basis, on weekends. It's a hobby. It's a passion. It's our bread and butter. That's what it is. Um, again, you, you spoke about the UDL and having things. Um, prior to this, we also spoke about you and safety rules. You know, it still bugs me that. The drag racing is always seen as a as a dangerous sport. Sure, uh, you can be playing rugby and you can get killed. You sure. can do any sport. I think any sport has or all sports has its dangers. Sure. Yeah, you know. Um, for me, the scary part, and and I don't want to be in your shoes as an organizer in the sense that I've seen people push against safety for their own good. Yeah, you know, I've seen you go to the guy and be like, "Listen, China, this, this is not safe. You know, your seatbelt's not right to you." Honest is not right, your seat's not mounted from him, it's got two bolts, and they're fighting with you. You're not chasing the oak away, you're not fighting him no. for your good, it's for his safety, so he goes back home to his family. Sure. You know? Again, we touched on the topic of you being affiliated once upon a time with an organization, just so people still know that even though you're not, you're still trying to bring a safe, you know, safe aspect to racing to everybody. And I think just maybe if you can um, elaborate on, on how you go about doing things for the street racing, by but bringing it safe and like you put it on the track. Okay, so obviously rules to certain sanctions change between, so you need to have certain requirements in place to race it, these events. Everyone would argue them and say, oh, it's a waste of money, this and that. Some people are just asking you to protect yourself. It's literally all of these. Yeah. And I'm talking to you about people that have spent 80,000 in October, yeah. 200,000 in ECU and asking me why he does he need safety belts and yeah. uh, harness. Well, and a roll yeah, catch. Um, because your car's very fast. Yeah. And I don't want you to hurt yourself and I don't want your kids to see you hurt yourself. Yes, yeah. I'd, like to, I'd like to go back in one piece. Yes, yeah. And I've had, like I said, well, I've been around a while now these events, so you can judge me good and bad events mm -hmm. because I've been around for so long where yes, others yeah. have come and gone. Yeah. But I've had accidents in my event. I've, mm -hmm. I've gone through the, the good and the bad in my event. It's rain, cancelled, I've, I've done all of it. There's nothing worse than having someone get injured at your event because of course, it lies on your back. Yeah. Or an incident happened because the way humanity turns around, it's the track's fault or it's the organizer's fault. Yeah. It's never the driver's fault. Yes. I'm a driver too. I'm an event organizer. I'm a driver too. And I understand how this works. When I get to the burnout box, yeah. this is in my hands. Yeah. Because the track's wide, the track's there. The yeah. track doesn't move. Yeah. Your car moves. Who's driving the car? You. You. You understand? So you're in control. And then all of a sudden, it becomes the event organizer's fault. Yeah. And then you go in, after the accident, you have a look at the cars or the equipment of the drivers and uh, no race suit, 
um, short pants, um, no fly extinguishers, and then all of a sudden, you're the one who's to blame, but you've been told to do this. It's a standard procedure. Yeah. You can race circuit, karting. I'm involved in quite a bit of motorsport around South Africa. Everything's got a safety requirement. No matter what, I'm sure mode control cars have got a safety environment. Some Maybe something for your fingers are burn it. I don't know. <laughs> there has to be some form of safety, otherwise, it's a circus. Mm. And things happen like we've seen happen. Yes. We've had a good friend of ours in our team, it's actually one of our committee members in yeah. our team. We've seen it. Yeah. I remember when I was coming back to the pits, I heard the car, I heard it shift, boom, and I heard, oh, yeah. I heard the car. I was over the tires, we were running next to one in the pits because we know that's a teammate of ours. Thank God we know not he's the type of guy that he's stuck because he couldn't put shit because he walked out of there and then he's called. Yes, stuff on, walked out away from things, and some other guys aren't so lucky. Yes, and sometimes a fatal accident is a fatal accident. Yeah. We, we, yeah. We've seen it happen in the motorsport, we don't want it to happen, yeah. but they do happen. I think we take it for granted that it that it can't happen to us. Sure. You know, we say, okay, what's the chance of me rolling my car? What's the chance of me hitting something or damaging something or rolling or falling off the bike or whatever it might be? You know, people. I think we take it for granted that we're like, are oh, we we lucky? We talk about having no. us. And again, the the thing that we don't realize is everyone that actually races is so close to us. You know, again, like Nazi's incident, it's a wake up call. You sure. like listen, that it's close to home. You know, Very close. What if it turned out to be the other way? Like how? How do you how do you foresee yourself okay racing again or as an event organizer knowing that this can happen to you because we, again we take it that can't take it for you know we take it for granted so yeah no I think safety measures long and short of it that it is imp implemented um, guys need to follow it it's not because you're trying to be stuck no, on it brilliant. it's for their own good it's for their own good at the end of the day yeah they, they think you're trying to be difficult and yeah. you're trying to dictate and you guys just want to have uh, control over us it's not that yeah. because there has to be some form of safety like we said. Rahul, um, going even back to Nati, Nati had his incident at PE. My car hasn't been out since then because I only used to have a front half cage of my car. Yeah. I've realized, hold on, yeah, something goes on. Yeah. No problem. I've rebuilt now, but I've extended the, the cage through yeah. the back, through the front, because I've just seen what happens. Yeah, and yeah. Rahul, I'm going to tell anybody with this. I'm going back on the Nationals this year yeah. to do the round of videos. I had the time of my life. Yeah, the time of my life, I'm going again yeah. because slow, fast, I'm going. But yeah. I'm going a little bit more serious, a little bit more equipped this year. Make sure yeah. that my car is ready because what's changed at PE from when Nazis had his accident? Nothing. So still the, same. the danger is still there. Yes, yeah. It's still there. So we just got to make sure whatever we go in there with this year, we've maybe just, like you said, got over our safety measures, make sure that we prepare ourselves because it's not the track's fault. Yes. I'm sorry to say. I know as much as people want to blame it, yes. it's not the track's fault. If there's a big 4 litre tub of oil in the middle of the track, you can hit it. Yeah. Sure, it's the track's fault, but these little incidents happen. It happened to Naughty, it happens yeah. to it happened to Keith. So we need to be aware that it can happen any time, and we need to make sure that we are prepared for it. Talking about tracks, as South Africans, we're pretty much unfortunate, but fortunate in the sense that we don't have world class tracks. We do. He likes to touch sensitive subjects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all for like I say, it's all uncut. We've got obviously we'll, you'll talk about the tracks. Um, you run, you have your events at Midvale. Sure. Um, you don't own Midvale, no. which is you know, a, a, a thing that makes it hard for you. So again, from a, not only the track, you know, the effort that you've put in the last couple of, I wouldn't say years, you've been at Midwell for long, but the, the amount of effort you've put in, I need to congratulate you on the six or seven months that it's been with the lighting, with the barriers, you know, well done. You've, it, it's been a flip over on the track, you know, you can see there's a big difference, yes. you know. Um, and you've made it a better place for us and we enjoyed, you know, we made the track from here all the way down to Midwell in Mayerton. The track circumstances that we have in South Africa, looking going forward from where we started, where you started with Midvolt to where we are currently, where you are currently with Midvolt, and the next five years of planning, where do you see Midvolt as a track? What is your plan as an organizer putting in effort and money into that track and trying to get people sure. on board to better it? Okay, well, the last quarter year, as you can see, we've lost some of the barriers and the lighting and so forth. I mean, if you look at the upgrades that have been done, they take their lives, for example. It's not much. I mean, you guys complain, no, it's not bright enough yet. It's, it's 
just on the trailer cars I'm going to lie to you there. Yeah. You've been stolen three times, cables, and I've had to replace them. Of course, mine. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. And things like that are starting to get to a point where I'm like, now, we're putting in money, but where are we? As yeah. a sport, where are we going? You guys have seen now, I wanted to do the concrete stock line and all that. So, I'm obviously, Nino is the owner of Mikkel, very good friend of mine. We actually like partner in the drag section side so we can help one another. Yeah. He helps me thoroughly and I help him. So, it's a hell of a nice guy. Yes. Sure yeah, no, no, I mean, I'm I'm I love the old man too. Yeah, yeah. And I thank him. If it's anybody, guys, I do think it's a guy like Nino. Why don't you explain this to you? So, cut you quickly. Remember, where do we race? Mikkel Race Line. Where is that? Is it owned by the government? No. Private, yeah. Private going by from Nino Venturi. Yeah. You race in his garden. That's Don't right. think people understand that. Yeah. We're in his garden doing what we love the most. Yeah. Let's respect that. Let's support him. Thank you to him for yeah. letting us race in his backyard. Yeah. So this one Literally, because he lives there. Yeah. Literally, yeah. Like, like you said, we don't have many tracks in South Africa. Yeah. So the guys that do open up their doors for us, let's appreciate and respect it. Mm. And yeah, so big thank you to even. All track owners that open up the gates for us to come and enjoy what we love the most. We've yeah. got to thank them the most because if they close the tracks, yes. we're no good. We know them. So big thank you to all of them and yeah, you know himself too. Yeah. No, vice versa, we need organizers like you too to help sure. our business, to help our industry. You know, we don't understand the magnitude of content creators like Etienne, like many other guys out there that do the live streaming. You know, we we have a passion. But a lot of event organizer, which then means people like us who build cars to race there and races like us, they won't have content to create. It's a circle. We it's all need each other. We, all we need to right appreciate right. each other. There we I think go. sometimes we just take it for granted. We don't mm -hmm. look and say, well, look, you know, we've had, I've seen it myself where, and again, I'll, I'll mention Etienne, he's been allowed. He gets sure. chills for him. He's followed me to Cape Town. He's followed me to, well, not me, but us. a group of us, us. Sure. He, Cape Town, Desi, Nkuzi. For, for no for and his own cost and his own cost and, and his own cost. cost i paid for the booze a few times but no, no, that's, no. that's that's enough. that is what i'm trying to say <laughs> people, and again he still gets grief oh your videos on this yes. just, oh you're trying to get famous off my car that you've built bro it's going to happen no matter what yeah. there's always going to be haters so you know stop it just go along with it you have to i think i do i must say for probably the, one of the most disliked organizers Hundred percent. You, for the south put you kept it quite a calm. I think you're not boxed many odds. Do you understand? You've been there, but you know what? You you know me on a personal level yes. longer. I'm not as bad as what others say. Yes, I yeah, promise right. you, I'm in the sport to try and just. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not trying to be the next Muhammad Ali. Yeah. I just want to put something together. So yeah. we've got something to do. Something to look forward to. I watch the guys being in this one. That's what kills me the most: yeah. the money, the time, the effort, the, the frustration guys go through to get their cars ready. Yeah. And then we've got nowhere to race. Yes. Yeah. UDL league is why I'm doing this so that yeah. maybe there's nothing going on we've got the UDL to focus yes, on yeah. team versus team action heads up low um, low safety in the sense like not dangerous for the guys so it's 200 meters yes, yeah. um, cheap you know, yeah. I mean American yeah. Muscle sponsored the, the drivers racing yes, for the first yes, drop yes, yeah. it's, it's not huge money but it's, it's it helps it, it makes yeah. a big difference traveling so. costs or whatever it is it helps with something it leaves, it leaves money available for some guys and these are the cars that we need yeah. This is what the, the Ninos, the, the track cars, open for us, or everyone, yeah. the, the tuning guys, the fuel guys, the parts. Well, what do you do? Where do you, if you break your car, where do you go? Well, I go to a few places. I need everybody, because without them, I won't be able to Okay, now you've got the parts, now we need some fuel. Now you're going to pay for some fuel. Okay, she's in our circle. We're all in the circle together. Yeah. We right. all make this work. As soon as one becomes fussy, it's like we pile on one yes. another. Like, yeah. Just move. It's just move. The scene is this small. Yeah. It's this small. It's very small. It's I don't think they realize how small the, the drag racing scene is here, opposed to overseas in the US mm -hmm. and stuff. It's massive. I mean, what we have, or what you would have at one event, they have for one class, volume wise. That's scary. That's crazy to think. I mean, I've seen the Alte World Cup. It's yeah. 400 cars. I'm trying to odd cars. Yeah. It's a big race. Oh. Yeah, sure. A good, a good event is 120. We don't even, I don't even go that high because yeah. cars don't need to race 120 cars. The yeah. facility just doesn't allow. Yeah. I normally try and cap at 80 cars, yeah. 10 or 15 bikes. Yes, yeah. So that guys can get their fair share of running. Right. 120 days, that's over. I don't yes, care yeah. anymore. It's just my anxiety can't take it. <laughs> and the drivers, and it's then tiny equipment bombs out on the yeah. day, and then it's like, well, yeah. no, we paid money to race here. Yeah. Rain comes out, there's so many factors to the yeah. business. So I'm trying to stay away from And water. again, you know, people, you know, there was an incident, obviously, at the track not so long ago. 
that the video went, I didn't say viral, but it went semi-viral. And you kept your calm about the whole situation. People don't see what actually transpired in you. You were just trying to make it safe for everybody else. You didn't ask for the rain to come. The old land to you as well. Afterwards, you tell you, listen, China, I paid my entry fee. Why did you stop the racing? But the track is wet. Where, where, where do you want to race? I don't know if you saw that. I don't want to roll this guy. Because Anyways, it's the so same crazy. guy still told me, um, but the solar cars are good things because yeah. still race. <laughs> you can't race. What's good for you is good for everyone yeah. else. And I mean, once again, I just saw the video in viral. I got all of the variables. Yeah. You don't need social media. Everything is blown no, completely no, out of proportion. No. We look like with the devils of the day, yeah. but come to know he's completely conducting himself in the wrong way at the yeah. track that should know where he be done is my own kids are playing around with they are doing dangerous activities so yeah. they just didn't know you know boys were being boys just being yeah. a good naughty could be handle the situation a lot better of course you can but yeah. when you hit at that time there you're watching someone come speeding down the track the opposite way yeah. kids playing behind the barriers you panic and yeah. then so like i said we could have done a lot better but yeah. We didn't go to her before. I mean, yeah. We apologize for you. It's so it's yeah. beautiful what we did it. Won't happen again. Yeah. But only like I said, we're always going to turn into a racial thing. Unfortunately, yeah. it just is what it is. Yeah. You know me on a personal level, so I don't need to explain myself. Yeah. It's happened four years ago at Midvale. Mm -hmm. I had some guys doing donuts in high yeah. on the grass. Yeah. Can you please stop? Can you please stop? After the fourth one, a cup. Yeah. Because you're damaging. He's going to tell us to leave. Yeah. Well, why don't we have sleep over at Midvale anymore? Someone shot the lock off apparently. In whose house? <laughs> in whose house? house? This is what I'm yeah. trying to explain to people, guys. Just think about this. If I come to your house for a bride and to sleep over and we get a little bit um, riled up and we drink, it leaves me no right to destroy your property. Yeah. Why are we destroying his property? Yeah. Now the camping has stopped. Now we're going to rekindle the air to fix the camping. Yeah, yeah. We enjoyed it. We like, we, no, we've camped it. We've camped outside. Have you camped outside yeah. yeah. before? Never. Okay, well, <laughs> we've done ourselves. Yeah. Why in the morning and yeah. brought us talking shit? It's, it's lovely. Yeah. So, like I said, please respect me, guys. Like it's a track. Yeah. In was in Kuzi. There was an incident that happened. Am I uh, mistaken? Yeah, there was an incident, obviously, with one of the newer cars. It all came out quite good in the shop. You know, we don't know the full history or the full story behind it. But yeah, he's, he's fine. He's recovering now. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see how quick things happen. And fault or no one at fault. Yeah. Accidents happen. No, so, yeah. so quick. We have to accept that in, the, in what we do. It's... it's it's not it's not inevitable it's, it's going to happen it's going to happen it's so let's be prepared for it yeah you know like i said everyone we keep blaming the tracks once again oh it's the tracks it's not the yeah. tracks half the time it's us as drivers trying to be yeah. bigger heroes than what we are you know how it is you you you've driven the chicks yes, yes. Yeah. if it steps on it's out the race is wrong it's done you the run yeah. you sitting behind him trying to catch him it's 200 meters wrong yeah. it's not going to go so even like the uli aldi that's why we've kept it a thousand foot yeah because we don't want to be doing those speeds in. Yes, yeah. 300 k's or even hour, heads up against one another. Yes. Let's keep it within the barrier section. Yeah. Is the, I get asked this question often, is the barrier going to damage my car? Well, <laughs> it's rather damage my car than damage a human behind you. This, yeah. this is what I'm trying to say. As friends in the community or driver, we can replace a car. Yeah. You can't replace someone's life. That's right. unfortunately something you can't yeah. do. So it's going to hurt your car, yeah. that I can guarantee you. Right. Is it my intention? No, but it's not yeah. my intention to kill anybody there either. Exactly. So let's, yeah try and have it as safe as yeah. possible. Going back to your barriers, a lot of guys find me and, oh, what's happening with the barriers? They're not up. I want to tell you this, Raul. The amount of barriers that we sold on when we put the post, up. the post out to what came to pen and paper, yeah. we'd be surprised. Okay. 139 is what I had on a piece of paper to buy yeah. barriers. 14 people bought barriers. Yeah. And now it's, these the barriers. Those yeah. are the barriers. Yeah. There are more barriers there than what's paid for. Let's yeah. just say that. Thanks to a very nice individual man that loves the sport, that's so into it, yeah. came to me and said, we're busy, let's not stop. stop. Yeah. We're helping people. Yeah. Never ask for a mention. Mm -hmm. And you know what this yeah. stuff costs. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a cheap. And then the, bag, the banners, guys were finding me, we had a bag, a batch of the banners, the guy printed all the banners, yeah. wrong, wrong. The whole 300 meters thrown away, whose expenses are that now? Yours. Yeah. I take it, because I'm doing it. We sell the bears at cost to try and oh, change with making money. I'll show you. Yeah. Let's go. Well, irrespective if you are even making money, at least you're making an effort to, to grow the sport. Um, so even if you were making money, how, who are we Think about out? it. How do you put up a barrier, concrete, metal, and avatar, and put up a hold for 3,500? Who the hell is making money? Yeah. Not me. But hopefully the tracking is safer. More people can come yeah. and watch. We can maybe eventually the goal is to try and widen the fold yeah. and then put the concrete start lines myself and you know in quite good terms and talks and 
hoping one day if I'm blessed one day I'll have my own track or I'll be more involved in Midvale one day because yeah. I want to keep it alive. I enjoy the sport. I love you guys too much. I love what we do. So yeah. that's my goal. It's my goal. How, how do you balance from being an organizer? Because dude, like I've been to a track and like not race on the day and I check off race in the general and it's like killing me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to the shop and fetch my car or the bike. Like how do you sit there getting the smell of tires burning, fuel, and not have the itch to like, and you just choose it on there? It's, it's very much, you know, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? So it's now things are starting to wake up again so more people are coming back into the scene so maybe there's time for yeah. me to race again but my, my rule of thumb is host event cannot drive yeah. I've told many organizers that mm -hmm. if I tried I tried to shut him off the second event yeah. I think ah, I just so yeah, yeah, yeah. I raced for Zanke's little players at yeah. the time I was hosting the event and everyone's on the mic I put the car away and I said unfortunately this has needs my full on focus and yeah so my focus on two guys in the day and I can't race and this is what makes me Miss the racing, I smell yeah. all the tires, the fuel. I watch everyone cash days jumping up and down. Like, oh, <laughs> to drive. So, so I never get to experience my own events, but I go across the country to experience everyone else's events. And that's where I get my praise from. We, we, we touched on the topic of the tracks, obviously, and, and what's left. You know, we just again want to say thank you to those that made an effort like yourself, Uncle Nazi, during lockdown, you know, sure. that, that at least gave us a platform, platform to, raise, to try and do something. You know, we're going to touch on that. I don't, so if we chat about the UDLD in terms of um, the joinings, and the joinings, yeah. In terms of the fees, how are you joining on the O1 on Street Society? Okay, well, on the, 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 the O1 on Street Society side, you pretty much know that it's not it's not just come and join. It's a brotherhood goal. Brother. It's come and show us your your loyalty. Like I said, because I want to be part of the O1. Show me where you follow. Yeah. Come to the right space. Travel with us because. Those are the people that are real. You watch George, George is a teammate of ours. Yes, that look, I, I mean, I, I take my hand I, 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 I love I like his passion and his love for the sport. I promise you, you are all like him. Yeah. The sport will be on the biggest level to be on yeah. because he's got this no lose attitude. Yeah. And why we like him as a guy because yeah. he helps us and he keeps me motivated to be honest with you. I'm yeah. saying, God, if he can do this with his car, give his car ready every single time, why can't we? Mm. Is he not a big racer? No. We, well, They're we not considered as big yeah. guys. That's a big guy. Yeah, he, we spoke about it on episode one. That look, I don't think he's missed the event this year. No. That looks like, and he's had issues at every event. He's broken the car or had issues at every event and has come back. Bro, he hasn't given up. Man. That look is, no, that looks a, that looks a machine. I think we need to have him here. Definitely. Maybe have a chat with that look. Definitely, but I'll tell you something. George will phone me for an event. JP can the camp over. Yeah. Yes, you can. I love it. It's my favorite thing. Why? Because they're in the mode for, if something breaks, the car's there, they're staying over, they're yeah. fixing it. It's part of the goal. Yeah. Have you fixed the bike at night in the trailer at Kuru's before? Well, have you fixed, so come and tell you a quick story, we touch on that. So down at Nkuzi, um, on the, I think it's a Friday that you can test, and we went and we were testing, and there was an issue. Uh, I'm not gonna go into too much of detail, but there was an issue. Now, that was, I was fairly new to the bike scene that time, yes. and I was like, okay, and he's been helping me with the bike, I haven't really been working on it. He's bike. brilliant with him. Yeah, that looks good. He knows the machine, that looks, he, he reminds me of George. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. So anyway, bikes on a 25 litre dump of fuel, the front of the bike. Got 45, this is now half six, seven o'clock at night. Pitch dark in Guzzi, there's no lights, you're on an air strip. Well, an air strip. The yeah. engine is out, right here, yeah, yeah. rebuilding the engine, engine back in and racing again. The Ready to day. go the next day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, well, you love it. Passion. It's a passion. So that was really passion. Yeah, so so, so, so are you, so are you guys. I mean, uh, there's a lot of guys in the 011 team and the other teams that I know that are yeah. super passionate. I sat the one night with Marty, blew a head gas cadet. There's no way yes, of a lie. Yes, at Midvale, yeah. It was 10 o'clock, half past nine, the head was off. Toby had taken the head off. Next thing I know, they were out in Midvale. Foot mm -hmm. flat left. Marty had gone to, I think it was Wilmer PPT. To machine. Mach well, wild up his head, yeah. machine it, flat deck, whatever they had to do. One o'clock in the morning, I see this bucket coming back inside Midvale. Yeah. And quarter to two, they're talking head bolts. Brand news are full. Why? They love the trouble. Yeah. They don't want to wake up in the morning, they want to do the burn off. They want to hear the crowd cheer. <laughs> Something about the sport and what it is, but yeah. It's I think it's the adrenaline, the testosterone, 
the whole combination it's of... It's the UFC on motorsport. Yeah, 100% easy. I see it as the UFC on motorsport. Yeah. It's 400 meters. You yeah. can make no mistake. I know it's on a circuit car. A circuit car, you know, you go 15 laps, you can make a mistake and then try and recover from it. Yeah. They're great drivers. They're super talented guys. Yeah. Not taking that easy away from probably better drivers than what we are. Yeah. But you know that drag race role well, when it's... It's tight and tense. Yeah. Is he going to come off? Am I going to come off? I'm going to pedal all the way. The scam you saw the two champs in Durban. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Sh- sh- you know, but... but <laughs> Go to Altec Wolf Cup, go to any other event, 30 40 accidents out of the whole event. Yeah, 100%. There's a lot of it's, 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 it's normal, it's part of the motorsport. Yeah, in South Africa, if there's just a bump of a car. Oh, the vent, the track, the, it's like a track and moving through a car, you understand? Yeah. It's not. It's the devil of the sport. Unfortunately, it's part of it. You yeah. take it, you gotta take the good of the bad. Yeah. So. You've got quite a good following with a lot of races, um, a lot of guys that, I wouldn't say a lot, you've got a handful, I think it's three. That participated in the World Cup. That's still currently at the end. Obviously, also participated, but he's yeah. not. He was locally. Locally, no, yeah, he's international. Locally, international. Yeah. He's doing super well inside. Yeah, so Quentin Boyle and that races that your event do pieces yes. that, that come to your. Um, if I look at all what they considered, I think as a top five that went over to overseas. Um, Dupi, Marius, Quentin Boyle, and what else was there? Ian, well, Ian. Ian Repsol came on his side in now. And then there was still Clay Pitt from Racing Boy. Yeah, Nobody had known. Yes. He wasn't yeah. Everton, but he was also there. Yeah. They went yeah. out there, super made us all super proud. I mean, a dream of yours, I'm certain, to go yeah, out there and do that. And we've got to thank them for what they've done. Yeah. Unfortunately, can we offer them what was offered overseas here? Yeah. We all know very well we can't. Yeah. But come and still enjoy it. Like I said, you turn it down. Yeah. Come race with us. You know, you can make an 8 second car a 9 and a 10. You can't make a 13 second car a 9 second car so easy. But you can with your other cars and yeah. maybe we're not as educators what they all are, but one day or another we will hold on to a good race. Yeah. And now to put on a good race. What I've come into this drag scene to do is just put on good race. Yeah. I know your car's fast. We know the parts, we know what the cost, we know yeah. the issues are inside it, we know what cars are capable of. Can you drive it? Yeah. Cowboy, it's got a super fast car in name. One of the best heads up races I've seen. Yes. Levert, one of the best heads up races I've seen. There's many we can mention the whole time. There's a few of them. But they stand out. Can we mention yeah. some of the big guys being great heads up races? I don't know. I've never seen the yeah. heads up race. Do I want to see the heads up race? Definitely. Brain? Oh, yes. Yeah. Does the whole country want to see the heads yeah. up race? Yeah. Would you like to see Quentin Boyle go to Cape Town race one of the thousand out in Cape Town? Yeah. The whole country wants to see it. The whole yeah. power his feet for it. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And I think... Not because he's King K, I know you also want to be... Oh, no. I'm a big Prince fan. K. Yeah. yeah, because you got a Corolla with the... With the Lawnmower yeah, I'm a K24 inside of it, man. Yeah, but well, I'm a big Honda fan. I've been a Honda fan my whole life. So, and we got myself on point of good friends, and I love his cars too, but he's also a super big K-series fan. Yeah. Myself, Dom. So, yeah, we got this little K thing going on. The guys kill us on Facebook for it, but yeah. we came all the way, Honda. Yeah, way. all the way. And then I see AJ got a grin there. Yeah, he's a K boy too. You know, a thumbs up from you, like. No, yeah, but yeah, a friend yeah, of yeah. tells me A is the way. A is the way. Because you can't push shot. Whoever thought that a push shot would go like that? And. Yeah. Sure. Rudolph can put it down. Yeah. Rudolph can put it down. Yeah. That's why I say one day about the 01 one, the drivers draw. We'll just look there. Yeah. Not the big cats that have broken records back in the day and all that. But the boys can drive. Yeah. yeah. I think from the driving aspect, and with, I, I'm quite confident with the UDL in the sense that the, the 01 one team has been regulars and constant. And we've sure. been cash days, we've been attending cash days, yes. we've been for the mini cash days on a Friday night that you're also on a Friday night Good. that we'll talk about now as well. So you've moved the Thursday night now to a Friday night, what, once a month? Yeah, it's twice a month. Twice a month. So basically on, on one, off one, on yeah. one, off one, because cars take money to fix and I always yeah. want to give drivers enough time to, to get this shit together so we can race. So, and I've also got a family, I'll be honest, you know, my days are gone, I can do it every week. Yeah. I've got three boys, I've got a wife, I've got a tent to, I've got a business, I've got a tent to, which is my main focus. This is pure passion. So Friday night we haven't got a space. Believe it or not, the older we get, our Fridays actually seem to open. Yeah. Eight o'clock I find myself sitting in bed and I said to my wife, they haven't moved the drags from a Thursday to a Friday, so the drivers and spectators, maybe the next day can just have a bit of an easier day. Yeah. I leave with one in the morning. Yeah. I open my factory, quarter past seven in the morning. 
I feel it. I feel it. I yeah. said, I did the one last week Friday. I woke yeah. up on Saturday. Yeah. I was at my factory at 8 o'clock. Yeah. It felt great. You know, but there's no pressure. So I, I'm surprised it feels the same for you. Yeah, like, no, we, we, we wild yeah. And I far away. That's a good move. But I think so. And you know our team. we got guys from Bonnestrum. They love to race. Yeah. Günther, Rudolf. Rudolf. They come um, even, even Even what's his name? Um, Andre comes all the way. All the way. Johan, to come Can and watch the race. Your and and I mean, I have to say something. If you look at the team, we've got new faces, old faces. Guys of yours have been with me since day one. We've got new guys of Rudolf, Andre, yeah. Johan. World champion. Yeah. Look at them, every event they call. When they cars on there, it's because either waiting for parts, yeah. someone to fix something, but as soon as those cars are available, yeah. they have every track, they're supporting everybody. And I'll tell you this, in my eyes in South Africa, these are the big races. Yeah. Guys of you, they've gone into biking cars across the country. Yes, if you've done it in the past, you're one of those, but yeah. the guys are keeping the sport alive. It's us, Raul. Right? Yes. The sport's dead. It's been dead for a while. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, the last seven years, now we're trying to get up everything. Is it too late? It's going to take some time and effort to get you back to the game together. And if you look at the tracks that are opening, I think Benoni now is going up with another yes. track. Um, I think it's Ishmael and Ron's track. Well done. Well yeah. done. That's exactly what it needed. Yeah. Because, like you said, we're always stuck in one place. Yeah. Let's go out and support everybody. Right. The, and once again, thanks to the guys. Dream COVID had hosted events mm -hmm. because I was in that group of guys that tried to do it. Yeah. Myself, Nazi, Harry. Um, there was someone else. It was Uncle Nazi, it was Harry. It was yourself. I can't recall, I don't recall anyone else. It was else. a mas oh, Massacre Elite. Massacre Elite. Oh. Massacre Elite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, but that was an event that happened. But to the other guys that stuck around and made it happen, well done and kudos yeah. to them because the money that was lost trying to do that, I know. I'll, you can put Harry next to this podcast with me, you can put Uncle Nazi here too. Taken knocks. I'm yeah. sure they have to. I know I can speak on Harry's behalf. Yeah. He's taken huge knocks. Yeah. To supply what we've promised to people. Yeah. And promise something and take it away from them. Yeah. Because there's a repercussion for yeah, it. It hurts us as event organizers when people put on events, yeah. put on this big thing and they don't carry it through because all of a sudden we look disloyal. Yeah. Like you can't trust us. If there's no trust in the event organizer because we haven't got enough tracks, yeah. so we need to trust the big organizers. Yeah. When, you, when you put a needle in someone's heart, it's a big problem. Yeah, a problem. But as Jay races, you know what? The past is the past. Move forward with or without them, let's all go together. The sport is bigger than what all of us are together. Yeah. So let's move forward. We all share the same passion at the end of the day. Sure. It's the media people, what we spoke about media people, fuel people, parts, engineering shops, it's all one big circle. One big circle. We all support each other yeah. with, and that's, that's the important part. Um, Obviously, with the Jag Nationals, um, we again we know what's the Jag Nationals. So, if you to tell the guys the Jag National what it is, you know, the different provinces that one travels to. Oh, well, for round one is Mervol. I'm just I'm not going to give you the dates, I'm just going to tell you where they are. Round one is Mervol. From there, it goes to Desi. Then it in goes to Durban, KZN, yeah. yeah. It's Port Sheps in the area. Then we go to PE, it's Krabanti Raceway. Yes, and then we finish all the finals at Kilari Raceway in Cape Town. You gotta try it. I mean, if you've never done it before, you follow it. But I will give a vouch for you. Well, all of us go to different provinces for different reasons. For different reasons. Yeah. Okay, some for altitude and bikes, and then yeah. and, and, and I'm gonna say this again, like the Cape Town guys. I, I go for entertainment. Okay, <laughs> let's say that. Great entertainment. Great entertainment. And was it good role? It was great. Yes, it was a lot of fun. Amazing. You know what I love about Tony? Before I forget please. about it, what I loved for me the most was the Cape Town fans. He's on another level. Wow. Win or lose, whether you're driving a VVL that runs 12 seconds, whether and if you lost the race, when you're coming back on the return day, they're all standing and clapping and whistling. It was the most, like, you know, I get goosebumps thinking of I tell everybody now, you want to go watch what I would say crack addicts to drag racing in this yeah. country. It's Cape Town. I mean, I've been there several times. I've actually went to the first bragging rights, and this is where I got to yeah. find myself straight in the mix there. Yeah. I looked at these people that were hanging on the fence. Fence, yeah, they hang on the fence. They the guy the came with the VVL. I mean, the door was falling hanging. off. The, the velocity stack was out, and I was like, is he whistling at um, the drag car or at the VVL? Yeah. When the VVL came to the burnout box, they were bowing. Yeah. And they were running at 12. Yeah. But why? We were all, do you know where that comes from? I guarantee that guy there is a restricted shop every Thursday. Yeah. It's the local the favorite, you know what? Because he supports the sport or the track. It's not hard to yeah. just put his car on Facebook. Oh, he's there. Now, you saw it. The guy with the Corsa. Yeah. No, it's the local hero. That thing is crazy. I mean, they went absolutely yeah. berserk. 
worse than the cash days. Yeah. And they uh, they've got a bigger following in the sense every Thursday, every whenever they were street yeah. and out, they're following the guards. They know who Raul would be, they know who JP would be. Yeah. We're trying to bring it back on the front. It's just a bit more central for them. Yes. It's hard, you know, guys don't understand that where Midvale is, it's in Meriton. It's, a, it's not central for us. No. For the majority of the races. For actually sure. everyone. I'm not sure. just saying us. Yeah, but it's it's, it's not central like Nani would be for yes. the locals around there. That but if you look at it, the drag racing is so small in South Africa, nothing is central. Yes, yeah. Because in the States, drag racing is so big. No matter where it is, it yeah. works. Fortunately, yeah, we've got different areas. So, like you said, Bononia open up, so now Bononia will get some. Bononia guys yeah. back out again, hopefully from Footbank side too, yes. coming from yeah. that section. Talton is always under the West Rand side, which is yeah. great. Now the South has sort of become a midfile. Yes. We don't have anything else, so this yeah. is the best we have to work there. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. No, I agree. JP, with um, regards to um, just drag racing as a whole in the country, you know, do you feel that having more I would say more, um, what's the word that I'm looking for, more industries being involved in sponsorships for like events that you host, will that make a difference? you feel that can uh, like impact the industry and help you grow the sport as well? It's all about growth, that's what we want. Sure. From all aspects, from the media, from the, the, the shop owners to the, the event organizers to the track owners, corporate is the word, corporate companies investing and, and I wouldn't say investing, because investing always seems like a, a big money thing, but Same. sponsors, yes, yeah. Sure. So how do you feel and, and, and what do you think about having sponsorships? You know, if you look at the sponsorships over the last years I've been around, if you always look at my calendars, it's your guys on it. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm probably one of the only events that take on those sponsors, because I don't want to promise you something I can't give you. Yes, yeah. You know where the sponsors should be by the drivers? Drivers should be taking their cars and themselves more seriously, running themselves more in a professional manner, approaching guys like for you instance, mm -hmm. I will have got a seven hour bike to drag race, would you sponsor me four drums at Ignore for the year? Yeah. Sure, no problem, I'm going to do that for you. You guys as drivers Thank need you. to go and find, <laughs> you guys as drivers need to go and find yeah. sponsorships yeah. and leave the bigger corporate companies for like the track owners and all that. Yeah. Just yourselves, the Hoosiers, the Mickey Thompson, the um, dictators, go sit down, give them a proposal mm -hmm. and speak to them. Yeah. You're not asking for 50 or 100,000 rand. Yeah. Have you actually had uh, a youth advocate for this life. Go and find some sponsorship. Make it easy on yourself. That's yeah. why like track racing is where it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you look at drags, who drives track racing cars? Is it, is it privateers, as in owners of the cars, or seat driven? Like, uh, he has a seat, you can drive my car. Yes, yeah, no, it's privateer. It's 99% yeah. private cars are driving. You go to the track, 80% of them are given the seat. Yeah. Someone's paying for their car yeah. to be there. Yeah. You don't have that in drags. Yeah. So, you need to find a situation or a structure that works for you as your car. Yeah. You use what race fuel? Yeah, well, ethanol. Ethanol. Yeah. Go to a fuel guy and say, can I have X amount of tires? Can I have one set of tires for you? It'll help you. Yeah. All of a sudden, you find that you've released a bit of change in the yeah. inter event. And who couldn't sponsor you for the year to cover four events in the middle? It'll cost you 2000 yeah. To have your name on my trailer, I'll post you every week. As drivers go out and find sponsors. sponsors. Uh, I'm racing with Mobile, I want to sponsor tires. Okay, what do we get? No, nothing, it's one part. So it's yeah, yeah. Just go with the proper little structure and sit yeah. down with someone, and I promise you, you'll find yourself in a better place with the people. No, I'm sure. Yeah. JP, with the regards to street racing, do you ever see yourself going back on the streets again? Uh, we can touch that topic because you're not affiliated to an organization. No, no, no. So, yeah. Even if I was, it's going to come from a one hard my past. So, yes, yeah. And if that would mean I would have to leave a I like touch on street racing. I feel a lot of. You know, if, when I go, I still do street racing, I look at it and I'll always do street racing. I feel that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stepping stone for a lot of people because a lot of people don't want to come to a big event or to a mid-fall event. Because they're like, I'm going to line up next to a Jags that sure. I'm too scared to do. Yes. We had a few of my customers, I had to be like, well, listen, please just come and try it out. And we yes. had a female now that's joined, she's now Jags, she yes. loves it. It's just the experience, but I feel having someone be a newbie and rather come to a, a safer environment to race as a stepping stone rather than the street. Would you find me back in the street again? I mean, that's sort of difficult to say now and I've gone as far as what I have in a sense of a mid -ball. So as the one one no, you'll probably never see on the street unless someone that okay, gave us a street in a street. So, so let's, let's stir the pot. What about an 011 who wants to maybe 011 street society versus another crew on the street? 
oh, you know, to back down on the challenge. <laughs> I'll never back down on the challenge. But as long as it went two ways. Yeah. As long as it went two ways, yes, you know, the situation. Yes, yeah. Like we did with Midway. Yes, yeah. I'll okay. come to your party, but you come to my party. Yeah. That's my fight deal. with the guys I have across the nation. That's a fair deal. We've gone across the country. Yeah. Come out, yeah. So I think that, that let's make that a challenge. Sure. Yeah. Make sure that oh, no, we'll keep it we'll keep it street correlated because Yes, yeah. We don't want it to go out of hand yeah. obviously. Yeah. And, and, uh, especially with PN and that Mother's Day gearbox, but like, I don't understand <sighs> man. Yes. That looks sits. I know it cost like. me five hundred and lost you. Okay, it cost me his fault. Okay, it cost me his fault. Shame it was the, the start line yeah. Osha. Unfortunately you didn't know how the race worked, bunting pre in the bit. Well, well that's a light off before being as in booster and automatic Monday's gear box with no night was <laughs> dead asleep, so sorry. You know, I, I give that Tommy so much of yes, it's not I know, I'm on you know you. what? That'll just smile. Any candies on no, any comes. I look at Dom yeah. on a daily basis and what? How is pre not punched off in the back? But guys don't understand is you guys got a massive that you might you might love you need to have for somebody in order yes. to have that much fun with yeah. them. I know what it's yeah. like. It's like and a brother you love you. Yeah, no, I'm a father, baby, like a father and brother. Son, yeah, yeah, yeah father he's son. old enough to be my fucking grandfather. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> that looks old. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm young still. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah. But I give you that. You know, if I must yeah. just touch on PN, maybe not like the fastest guy in South Africa. Mm. Uh, man, he drives everywhere. Yeah. He races yeah. his car everywhere. In different formats. <laughs> the last time, we speak on almost, I wouldn't say on a weekly basis, but we, pre- we speak more frequently. And he phoned me for the Kuzi. He's like, listen, this is a random call. I went to Kuzi. No, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, well, I'm going to today's 800 meters. Sure. That's a, that was the phone call. That's yeah, that's right. yeah. And imagine you had 200 drivers like that. The sport would flourish. Because yeah. Now we're getting fussy. We're getting fussy so that we like we've got 300 packs to, yeah. to pick from. We don't. We enjoy what we have and enjoy it. Pre yeah. another one of them. Yes, it goes everywhere. Yeah. And like we were saying, we go everywhere. Financially, we go as far as we can. Yeah. But if we don't as a team, we come in, we help one another out. We have to keep this thing on. Yeah. And by going on Facebook and asking for 100 likes, it's not going to keep the sports no, alive. No, At the track, bring a friend, bring a cooler box, come yeah. enjoy us. Get involved with the dramas. I mean, I've got a video on the 011 page, it's still there. Two boys going to ask Dan from Custer, who's 011 boy back yeah. in the day, for an autograph. I mean, I know it's pathetic. Yeah. It's not anything famous, but... No, but that you, you don't know who looking up to you. That's what you need to, like, behave in a certain Take the professionalism. Yeah. Like I said to drag races, just apply yourself a little bit better. You yeah. drag strip back places. Um, like as you know, everyone's going to the gazebo now, the cars yeah. are getting wrapped. You're making the sport look a lot better. Yeah. Race suits. I mean, I still see guys with 10 second cars yeah. with no race suit. Gentlemen, I know it's, it's a 10 second straight line. Fuel lines boost. Yeah. Things happen. Cars catch a light. I think look te- professional. I think technology has also taken over in the sense that now. You know, you get in a car from factory with aircon, which I tell PNG Supra doesn't have an aircon, no. doesn't have a sunroof, and that car goes nine seconds, eight seconds. You know, sure. that guy's not going to be jumping in his expensive. I mean, picture Casper. Yes. That looks like two point nine yeah. meters tall, and I mean, that looks, he's going to fit his PN in that race suit. That race suit's going to come here. Dude. It's going to look like a three quarter. Sure. Uh, sure. You know, we have to change the rules for the certain cars. And but if I say that, that there's always options for everything, but just try and make the best out of the situation. Try your best. Don't just say, oh, I'm not going to do yeah, that. Just, try, yeah. try something. Like you said, now he's, he's a hell of a big guy. Again, you know, Casper will be like, okay, I can't find him to import myself yeah. something. Because he knows the safety side when he needs to get it done. Yeah. Yet other guys will tell you, well, I'm not doing it. So, oh, give me a suit, I'll wear it. Yeah. That's a great attitude to have. <laughs> That's a great We're going to go far. Like yeah, that. 100%. Go to any circuit base, anywhere else, mm. and see if anyone is not in a race suit, not in shoes, slow cars are all. Yeah. Fast cars. Everyone is equipped in the same way. Yeah. We need to be like that, yeah. and I think that will help drag racing. A little, just push it a little bit to the professionalism side, which I think is what we need. Yeah. Honest to be with. I'll be honest. So, uh, upcoming events. Your own events. We, we discussed that Friday, every second Friday, cash days, and mini cash days. We mustn't get confused with the cash days and mini cash days. Every yes. Friday. Any, anything else on the calendar besides um, the autos or what? Any other? We've got the eleventh. You don't have to give us exact date. I'll give you Just April. I know yeah. April. So I don't give anything past April at the moment. April now is the national challenge, which is a Friday and a Saturday. Yeah. No longer on a Sunday, so the guys can travel back. Yeah. The week after that, you've got Tolton opening up again at Club Meet, which the one will probably be an event. And then after that's the UDL the twenty seventh is the opening day round one of UDL with Ed and Nicole. Yeah. The way that's going to work is. Bomb squads, all the teams that are in the league will bring out a certain amount of cars in a day, whatever's available to us, yeah. and we're going to race heads up against one another. 
in a round robin challenge to see who wins round one. So the, basically the point system would work, only the last four cars of each class would be able to get points for the team. Yeah. Round two will be, I think we're going to try and push round two at a different venue, round three at a different venue and then finish up at round four wherever we do. Yeah. And there might be actually a little needle in the haystack here, well not the same thing in the haystack, a needle in your back that's going to might jump into the UDL league which is the KZN. They want to okay. put up a team too, yeah. they want to come and join us because you know very well they travel. Yeah, KZN do. boys travel. Right? I think they're trying to get away from their wives or something. I don't know what it is. Well, they want to share their character with everyone, but they can share with people. Keep, keep fighting with your yeah, keep fighting. Nice but fight. if I tell you, you want to find a bunch of guys that search for heads up racing, yeah. KZN so boys. Yeah. They phone you on a regular basis. Yeah. When you're racing, you guys come in because I believe that's what the sport needs. Yes, yeah. To get it to it was, it's super expensive to race a timing board. And today with the current dollar price and fuel price, tire shortage, tire shortage, tire shortage, to chase PBs in yeah. the sport. Tire shortage. Sure. So about track bike. <laughs> and what do you do, Raul? Turn it down, raise heads up. Yeah. Still make it competitive. Take the clock away. Yeah. The drivers don't want to take the clock away. That's the problem. And yeah. I think I think it's I think we need to get a few of those double guys up on the next episode when they're down here for the Jack Nationals or have a chat to Addy. Definitely. Um, so yeah, we'll be interested to hear their yeah, side of the story and their saga. So sure. yeah, we we'll try to try to keep this podcast clean, but we we'll start giving away juicy stories soon. But JP, thanks for your time. Thanks, thanks for everything. Really, really appreciate it, it's guys. As JP mentioned, um, he's got a, a full calendar, race calendar ahead. Follow the O1 One Street Society group Please, or you. Street Society Instagram, Facebook page to keep up to speed with everything. Um, subscribe to ATN CCC YouTube channel. Please click on the link below. Bob, okay. ready for this? <laughs> Guys, we'll be giving away a lucky viewer, subscriber that follows ATN's channel. We'll. So guys, any f subscriber to um, ATN CCD's YouTube channel, put a comment there below what you'd like to see next, or so any sort of comment, thumbs up, you love the video, whatever it might be, we'll stand a chance to win a paddle, either collab or paddle, CCD or paddle. So yeah, we'll notify the winner on the next podcast that we'll do. Hopefully we'll hear from Harry, but again, JP, thank you for yeah, everything. Well, really thanks for really inviting me, I really appreciate it. I want to ask you one question before I leave. Yeah. Do you think what is the UDL league? Why are you putting me on the spot? You know me, I'm competitive when it comes to this. Uh, oh, one, one, the dialing code. <laughs> it's going to put a little side section here. It's just to let guys know that as an event organizer at Midvale, and I use it quite a bit, I want you guys to know that if you are serious about hosting an event, you have a decent set of rules and you'd like to see different events, you're welcome to contact me and come and host these events at Midvale. It's open to anyone. It's not only that I can host events there. You can sit down, we can work out some numbers and so forth and see if it's viable for you. But yeah, if you've got an idea and it's it's solid and you'd like to see it happen, contact me and let's see what we can do for you at Midville. It was like you bring back the days of um, North or South, there's all these other events. If you guys think those things can come back and work today, contact me. Let's see what we can do at Midville. And yeah, we welcome. We're trying to grow the sport. It's not only for me to do this. And yeah, please contact me and let's see what we can do.